there's a little secret I'd like to share with you all today. Just a little secret that not many people are aware of outside of the tango world. And the secret is this. The Argentine tango, which is danced in many local tango dancers all over the world, is actually an improvised conversation that takes place between two people. Two people who may have been complete strangers until they actually met a few moments before the dance, making eye contact, a nod here, an acceptance there, and they're off, they're dancing. Most people regard tango as a very beautiful and passionate dance, but to me, it's also like an amazing journey which imitates life. And sometimes it's difficult to tell when the journey truly begins, not sure if it's the point of conception or the moment of action. In my case, looking back, perhaps it began through watching Hindi Bollywood movies and listening to Indian melodies while growing up in the once beautiful, tranquil garden city of Bengaluru in southern India. Perhaps it was even earlier from sensing the musical vibrations in my mother's womb. Of course, I have no recollection of what I felt in my mother's womb. She always sang with a very sweet girlish voice. However, what I do clearly recall is that moving and thrilling sensation I felt every time I heard a tango melody. It made my heart soar and yet, it made me want to melt simultaneously. And that, as they say, was that. I was well and truly hooked. So, despite being of the generation of men who grew up with two left feet, <laughs> I was persuaded by my tango teacher, who informed me that tango is actually a walking dance. So, if you can walk, you can tango. So that's how me and my two left feet learned to tango. I also met lots of wonderful characters through this class. I also learned about musicality, improvisation, about posture and floor craft. The thing about tango is it makes you appreciate not only the dance itself, but it can also inspire you with other, in other areas of life. You see, during this chapter of my life, whilst my evenings were spent ta learning tango, during the day I was actually a social worker, working alongside people with intellectual, physical, and emotional difficulties, which was both challenging and rewarding. However, it got to the stage when I realized I needed to take a career break. I needed to look after myself. Now, in social work, we often say a crisis is an opportunity for positive change. And so when I decided to take this career break, tango was the door. It opened this opportunity to a new life, which in time would take me to places and meet people I never thought possible. How, you ask? Well, given my passion for tango and for traveling, a plan began to emerge in my mind. In the world of tango, for the first few years, you're just a beginner. And so I, I considered myself, as, and still do, a mere fledgling. But I decided to take this opportunity of the career break to spread my wings a little and fly off to Argentina. Yes, folks, Argentina in South America, where they speak Spanish. And I didn't. Well, maybe just a few words. But of course, this didn't stop me. Inspired by the words of Paolo Coelho, when a person truly desires something, all the universe conspires to help that person to realize his dream. So I was decided I was going to be the proverbial shepherd from the alchemist, and I was going to seek my treasure, my tango treasure, in Argentina, and the universe was going to help me. So why not? Now, most people would just book a hotel, hop on a plane, and that's it. 
but I imagine the possibility of turning this trip into a real adventure by tangoing to Argentina and raising some money through sponsorship for people affected by Parkinson's disease at the same time. So the fundraiser was called Tangoing to Argentina in 80 Days. The first part of the journey would be overland via Europe and North Africa, and the rest of it would be on a cargo ship to South America. Well, that was the original plan anyway. And yep, as some of you may have guessed, life doesn't always go to plan, does it? So we have to improvise a bit, a bit like tango. There were a few challenges, a few brown, dirt, steamy moments, if you like. There were some car issues, some language issues while trying to converse in four languages as I'm going through. And it turns out that January is not such a great time to sail across the Atlantic Ocean, especially when you've arrived a week late due to the aforementioned car issues. I found this out when I arrived in Tangiers in Morocco. There was also the little matter on the little back injury, as I discovered um, from riding a horse bareback while in the hills of El Pardal, some 1,500 meters up, about three or four hours walk from nowhere. <laughs> especially, it's not easy, especially when you're trying to um, milk a goat with a dodgy back. Another first for me, as I'd never known many goats in my life before, let alone had to milk a pregnant one on my hands and my knees with a dodgy back. You can just imagine it. While the goat's, of course, trying to escape. But there is good news. The good news, I eventually did end up in Buenos Aires. And this is one of the lovely milongas, as you can see, which takes place every week in an area called San Telmo. So this earned me the nickname Phileas Fogg of Tango, as one radio presenter put it. Now, some of you wasn't, might be wondering, if I wasn't working, how on earth did I manage to do this financially? Well, I'm not a rich millionaire, and I didn't have a rich father to kind of fund the trip for me. Um, unfortunately, he disappeared a, a long time ago. However, the simple answer is I managed it on a very tight shoestring budget. I improvised. I created an alternative lifestyle for myself. This may involve making sacrifices, so I had to reduce outgoings, downsize, mending, repairing, and doing that many of life luxuries to ensure I wasn't enslaved to my mortgage anymore. For the first time since I began working, I paid off my student loans, I had no debts, and I was actually mortgage-free. I also created my own exchange model lifestyle by offering my services in exchange for accommodation or food by house sitting, pet sitting, painting, decorating, designing, creating fashion and artwear websites. By taking pictures of products and people, by offering English lessons in exchange for tango lessons. This is how I ended up herding goats, chicken, horses and dogs at Al Pardal. Instead of dining out, I cooked at home. Rather than chuck stuff away or buy new stuff, I learned to sew, darn, and re recycle. All of this meant I could afford to travel, but more importantly, I had more time. How often have you heard that expression, time is money? Well, to me, time was far more precious than money. Because I know many people, like myself, who work very hard their entire lives, sometimes working two or three jobs just to make ends meet and to pay the bills. We work so hard that we do not have the time to spend with the very people we care about or activities, to take part in activities which enrich our lives. However, since the career break, I'm not ashamed to admit that I might be cash for poor but I am time rich. And this allows me the luxury to explore many of the interests and activities which stimulate me rather than 
wait till I have to retire. Well, because of this little trip and the others that followed while traveling through India, all the way from the south to Mount Everest in the north, through Nepal, or wandering via um, East Africa, which is a big part of my family history. From listening and sharing experiences with the people I met on my travels, I started to see life from a totally new perspective. I started taking photos again and writing, initially just recording my scribblings in the form of a tango and travel blog. It was intended for friends and family to keep up with my adventures, but apparently, it was visited by over 10,000 people in 79 countries, highlighted on the map in pink. Okay, so probably not the millions that Michael Palin probably gets, but I didn't think I knew that many people. I guess that's the power of the internet. A few people thought my writing was interesting and engaging, which, was, which urged me to carry on further, and it helped me explore the possibility of writing a book and to share some of these travel stories. I was also accidentally contacted by a French filmmaker, which got me interested in making films. So, for the first time a few months ago, I had my first opportunity to work on a TV serial and my first major Hollywood film, if you like. So I approached, at the grand age of 50, I decided to enroll on my first film course. Who knows where it may lead? So watch this space. Now, while all of this might be mildly interesting, you may be wondering, what does it have to do with tango? Well, the thing about tango is every person do you speak to will have a different take on it. One Argentinian musician and lyricist called Enrique Santos Discepolo describes it as a sad thought that is danced. The famous Argentinian writer Borges had a very interesting description. He said, tango was a direct expression of something that poets have often tried to state in words. The belief that a fight may be a celebration. I leave that one for you to ponder on. But the, des the best description for me is given by a dear friend who describes tango as follows. It's art, it's poetry, it's the delight of love, pain, and tears. Tango wouldn't survive solely on a happiness diet. It needs the food of the full spectrum of human emotions and colors. Isn't that lovely? But tango has so many fascinating aspects. We could talk about the musicality, about poetry, especially when accompanied by this hypnotic instrument called the bandoneon, and how tango dancing can feel like practicing mindfulness. Sometimes, when you watch tango dancers and milongas, with, you see these blank faces with closed eyes, as if they're transfixed, focusing in a trance-like state. Or we could talk about the various kinds of traditional and modern tango music, about waltz, tango, milonga, or um, nuevo, which is all the cool kids today are dancing. We could talk about its rich history, and how this lowly dance, the result of an African, um, South American, and European merger, has somehow managed to break social barriers all over the world. We could even talk about how tango affects the brain and our general health. How this unique combination of musicality, improvised movement, and exercise can have incredible physical and emotional benefits. For example, neuroscience has discovered that tango can help people affected by Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, or people suffering from depression because it lowers cholesterol levels, cholesterol, cortisol levels even. I guess the shamanic healers of old knew something we didn't.
Because when somebody approached them with depression, they would ask, when was the last time you danced? Also, did you know that there are communication and relationship coaches who use tango as a tool to improve team working? After all, you have two people standing in front of each other, possibly strangers, doing two different jobs or roles, trying to solve a problem in a very restricted space sometimes, without knocking each other off the, their feet. It involves listening and feeling. You see, in tango, two have to be one. However, for me, the real magic in tango is about connection. Living in a world where people are often under pressure, busy working long hours, it's very, very easy to become disconnected with the very people we care about or our environment. There are 1,440 minutes in a day. That's 10,080 minutes in a week. And yet sometimes we can't find five minutes to connect with somebody we care about or to go for a walk in the sunshine and take in nature's beauty. Whereas tango offers people the opportunity to connect with somebody, even if only for 12 minutes, the time it takes to play three or four tracks in a tanda, while in a lovely warm embrace. Now, I'm not suggesting everybody in the audience goes up and takes up tango. It does take daily practice, and sometimes it's really frustrating when things don't go your way. A bit like any other part of life. However, what it can do is open your mind to a life of different possibilities, no matter how young or not so young you are. Lastly, I would like to leave you with this thought. If our survival depends on our ability to improvise and adapt and to connect in order to protect all the inhabitants on the beautiful planet, then perhaps tango can help us on this journey. Isn't it incredible how a little dance class can change your life? Thank you for sharing this journey with me. I wish you all the best with yours.